I'm Jeff DeBalco of the Woodrow Wilson Center's Environmental Change and Security Program, Washington, D.C., but I'm in Copenhagen uh, for some meetings on climate change and security. And in fact, two of the reports are discussed were prepared by Alec Crawford from the International Institute for Sustainable Development, as well as his co-author, Ollie Brown. And Alec, can I ask you about these reports that you did with the support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Danish Ministry? Can you tell me how you went about investigating climate change and the risk of violent conflict in the Middle East and in Africa. Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the two reports were looking at two very different areas, but both areas that have been identified by analysts as two of the regions that will be most likely affected by climate change when it comes to increasing the risk of violent conflict. Uh, the Africa report that we did was based on some field work that we carried out in late 2007, early 2008 in West Africa, along with some field work that we've been doing in Central Africa. That was augmented by some desk studies, um, which was aimed at identifying where the threats are, if there's a link between climate change and violent conflict, and what can be done uh, by policymakers both in Africa and uh, in the international community to address these links. The Middle East study was uh, carried out over the course of about a month in terms of field work earlier this year, where we spent four weeks going to Israel, Jordan, Syria, uh, the occupied Palestinian territory, and Lebanon to ask experts in the, each of those countries, um, whether it's security experts, natural resource experts, uh, politicians, academics, to ask them what they thought uh, were the risks that were posed by climate change to the peace process in the region. Um, that was then followed up by a series of reviews, a series of interviews, um, and then we finally released the, released the, the paper today in Copenhagen. And so, uh, the bottom lines, what, what, is, what are the messages that you want people to take away from these reports as we're trying to wrap our arms around these climate change, conflict and security connections? Well, the main bottom line that comes out of both reports, I think, is that climate change certainly does uh, pose a risk to, to the world in terms of violent conflict, but that there's a lot of nuance to that argument and a lot of attention and care has to be uh, put into making that case. Uh, there's research that needs to be done into these links because intuitively the links make sense um, that climate change will lead to violent conflict but a lot a lot of research has to go into exactly where um, where those links might be. We, we don't want to make the overly simplistic argument um, that climate change will necessarily lead to violent conflict uh, but rather that it could be one of one of many uh, causes and one of many drivers that act as a threat multiplier to, uh, to conflict in both regions. Uh, so that's the main kind of broad takeaway. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Well, certainly in the year, uh, and in fact the fall, the upcoming months of the big climate change negotiations in Copenhagen, we will look to you guys and IASD to continue to help us refine our understanding of these issues and walk that tightrope between uh, hyperbole and over and oversimplification and saying that we don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, something I think you have really achieved with the reports and uh, critical and understanding how to put these things together. So thank you very much. You're welcome.